Today's topic is bonds. We're going to talk about how a bond works, we're going to talk about the bond market, then we're going to tie it all into the European debt crisis. It is mid-November 2011. Okay, how a bond works. Company A has $50 million in assets, no debt, therefore its owners have $50 million in equity, there are 5 million shares outstanding, implying a value of $10 per share. Okay? Company A wants to expand. They need to raise $10 million. A couple, ways, couple of ways they can do that. One would be through a stock offering. They can essentially bring in new owners. And they need to raise $10 million at the $10 per share. That, of course, would be 1 million new shares making them a $60 million company with 6 million shares outstanding. Okay, that's one way to raise the capital for the expansion. Another way would be to borrow the money. And if they borrowed it through a bond offering, it would work like this. Okay, so they're going to go into debt. They, they, uh, in my example, they're not interested in any new owners. They'd like to keep the, uh, the profits to themselves resulting from this expansion. So let's say they use debt and they do bonds. Uh, bonds are denominated in $1,000 increments. Uh, in this example, we'd need $10,000, $1,000 bonds issued. And let's say that they're going to pay 5% for five years. Okay, so they can raise the money that way. And uh, the, uh, the bondholders get the, their interest payments before they get to divvy up the... Uh, the spoils from their from their expansion. Okay, now let's uh, let's see what happens after the bond is purchased or the bonds are purchased. Let's just say hypothetically that uh, let's use uh, well let's just create a new company. We'll call it XYZ Company. XYZ Company is a good sized company, publicly traded, and S the Standard Poor's and Moody's give it their highest ratings. And, uh, and this would be their credit rating. Let's say Standard Poor's gives it a AAA. We'll use theirs and you have $50,000 burning a hole in your bank account, so you buy this XYZ bond that's rated AAA, and we'll use that 5% uh, with a five-year maturity, okay? So you're gonna get six-month interest payments, or payments every six months, of obviously half of 5%, which would be $1,250 every six months for five years, and at the end of the five years, you get your $50,000 back. Life is good, okay? Let's say, hypothetically, of course, that uh, two years in, all of a sudden, something surprises you and you need your money. Okay? I'm going to run two scenarios. The first one is the unfortunate scenario. You need your money. There's this bond market where you can sell your bond. And um, unfortunately, in the marketplace today, uh, AAA rated bonds, let's say with three year maturities left on them, in my example, are paying 8%. Okay, you need your money. It's fifty thousand, only earning five percent. Of course, nobody's going to give you that fifty thousand when they can get this. So you have to, to uh, essentially discount it. It's, it basically, you uh, you got to go below fifty thousand if you hope to get rid of that bond. The person buying the bond essentially would pay less. It would mature for the fifty thousand. So when you add everything together, they're going to do at least at least as well or better or at least as good or better than they would uh, at the eight percent. Okay, scenario two would be uh, the more fortunate scenario, and that would be interest rates have dropped since you bought your bond. Two years later, you have a $50,000 bond, AAA rated, earning 5%, and current rates are at two. Therefore, you have a, a pretty nice commodity on your hands. You could actually get a premium for it. You'd actually get more for the $50,000. The, the buyer presumably would hold it get the $50,000 check, but because of the higher coupon or the higher interest rate, then it would work out as good, if not better, than the 2% that they could get in the marketplace today. Okay, so that's how interest rates impact bond prices. Okay. Um, the other thing that can impact it is credit ratings. Let's say that XYZ begins to fail miserably. Uh, some bad investments, the environment changes, the economy hits their industry, and they get, this would be an extreme example, they get uh, downgraded all the way to, let's say, C+. Okay? 
So they've gone from AAA to C plus, and you've owned, you still own their bond. C plus would be considered a, a speculative bond, meaning that the S and P in my example has looked at them and they're not doing well at all. Well, you come in two years later, and again, in my example, you need your money, and the problem is that your trip, once AAA bond earning five percent is now a C plus bond earning five percent in an environment, in my example, where let's say you could fetch twelve percent because of the risk. The higher the risk, the higher the return an investor is going to require. So C plus is paying 12%, yours is paying five. Unfortunately, in two years, you are gonna take a substantial discount if you wish to get out of your money. Oh, I'm sorry, get out of your bond, get your money back. Now, if let's say, let's say it went the other direction, let's say hypothetically, you actually bought a C plus bond uh, two years ago, paying 12%, and uh, life got much better for that company. And again, this would be an extreme example. And XYZ you got a, a credit upgrading to AAA. Now you have a AAA bond with three years left paying 12% um, in an environment, let's say, where AAA bonds are earning five. Well, then, of course, you have a very, very nice commodity indeed. You would get a substantial premium um, for that particular bond if you needed to get out in two years. Okay, so in summary, when this first. Okay, so this is what you need to keep in mind. When interest rates are on the rise, bond prices generally fall. When interest rates are falling, bond prices are generally rising, just like my illustration. When credit ratings are on the rise, or a credit rating for a given company, the price, generally speaking, will rise. When a credit rating declines, the price, generally speaking, will decline, okay? So in this example, I, I said interest rates drive prices. Well, in this example, actually prices would drive interest rates because in this example, if you get a credit rating uh, upgrade and the price goes up, then the, the corresponding yield uh, would, would essentially go down, okay? And, and vice versa, when the, uh, when the price goes down to a credit rate, due to credit rating, increase and the, essentially the yield uh, goes up. So, so basically you can say interest rates drive prices. In a sense, with credit rating movements you could say prices drive interest rates. But this is the thing that I would want you to be thinking about the most. And think about it in terms of today's environment with interest rates here in the Euro U.S. You know, at like history of mankind lows. Um, uh, I'm not a big, I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a big bull on bonds these days. Let's just put it that way. Okay, let's look at all this in the context of, uh, of Europe, and let's talk about Italy. Uh, earlier this week, Italy had a five-year bond auction, and the yield on those bonds came in at about 6.5%, which is very high, by the way. Reason being, as, I, as I've kind of illustrated already, is that Italy has got financial issues. We know that, right? And so people investing in Italy, people that would lend money, institutions, banks, for example, uh, aren't comfortable lending at the rates that they would have, say, maybe five years ago. And here's, here, here, herein lies the problem. Let's say we're at the end of a five-year bond, and let's say it's a, a bond that's worth, say, or it's a 50 billion euro bond, and it was um, at, say, 3%. That's what Italy was paying on that debt. They they're now going through what we call refunding, and that is where they have bonds coming due and they need to borrow to pay those bonds off. And over the next year or so, Italy has a whole bunch of refunding to do. Well, if you were paying three and suddenly you go to six and a half, along with all the other issues related to the budget that we now all know about, that is, that is very problematic. Now, the fact that it's gone to six and a half percent and not a hundred and six and a half percent tells you that investors are still, I think, believing that this whole European situation gets ultimately fixed. Okay? Um, now, what fixed means depends on who you listen to. Um, lately, there's been talk of, of something that they would call a euro bond, a bond that would be issued um, and then backed by the European Central Bank. France seems to want that. Germany wants no part of it because Germany is really the one, the one country that's in pretty good shape over there. And um, I don't know that they're interested or they're definitely not interested in, in paying interest rates on something that, that basically reflects the, uh, the, the terrible balance sheets of places like Greece, etc. Um, another, another option that's been thrown out there, and this is another one that, that France would like, is for 
the, uh, the EFSF, the European Financial Stability Facility, which is the, the bailout fund, to become a bank and actually be able to borrow from the ECB. So folks, you know, the, the fixes that are ultimately being, um, being uh, addressed or being recommended have to do with you know, the ECB backing sovereign debt of countries that you normally would have nothing to do with to inspire investors to come in and get yields down the printing of more currency and so on. So time will tell how that ultimately all plays out. But hopefully this illustration uh, gave you a good feel for how bonds work, just the basics, and, and really what the problem is here related to the bond market. What we're seeing here is the bond market is actually probably forcing the European leaders' hands because um, as yields go up, the, the future looks very problematic for these, for these countries. And, um, and again, that will inspire them to do something. And again, we could talk philosophically about whether they should be bailed out at all or we should let the markets take care of it, but that's, that's another video. And speaking of other videos, if you haven't seen the one that we shot on Greece and on credit default swaps, that one is very instructive in terms of uh, probably more detail, digs deeper into the European currency crisis or European debt crisis and how that impacts perhaps uh, U.S. banks or how it could impact them in the future. Thank you very much for watching. The blog is Between the Lines. I'm Marty Mazzora. Our firm is Private Wealth Advisors. Our website is pwadvisorsinc.com.